All right. We having something a little bit different this morning from the regular kind or the regular meetings we've had. Doc, Dr. Fidel is shared and preached. I preach. But this morning we are not preaching, we are just teaching. And um, that's why I say it's a little bit different. Tonight we can preach. But we want to talk. This year made it 33 years I've been holding this microphone. If you, if you look out my face, you'll be deceived. I have grace. So if you look at my face and wonder I look, don't, 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 don't get deceived. I've been preaching for a while. I've been around for some time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And um, at least to be around for over half a century, you've tried. But I want to say a few things that I... That's why I say I'm just want, wanting us to open up ourselves and address some things. The, mar the, the marriages of most believers are dying. And there are many men who are in their marriage not because they are happy, but because they do not want to disobey God. Now, some of them may not want to disobey God. No, they don't want the public to see. So everybody is just managing, pretending. So I want to just share with us on making marriage work. There is nothing in this life that is hard. Things are only hard when you don't know how to do them. Nothing is hard. If you don't know how to, if you don't know how to drive a car, the car it, driving is hard. Am I correct? If you don't know how to drive a car, driving is hard. But when you know how to drive a car, you can use your last finger, and um, you just be turning. And but when you don't know how to drive a car, you remember? Do you remember when they taught you how to drive? Do you remember the seriousness you were holding the steering like a hired killer? You remember that? You heard the steady so tight. Like as if you are an assassin. You heard steady like that. And they say, they say, they say, touch as a little. Vroom, vroom, the car took off. They say, ah, that's not to drive. I remember the person who taught me how to drive was a very annoying person. Very annoying person. I don't know, I don't know who sent me. Because he was a person that they have, everybody has sacked him from driving. They have sacked him. He will go here after two days, they will sack him. He will go here after two days, they will sack him. So I wanted to drive, and he was the only one available. So I told him, I want to drive this car, this car. He said, oh, Yeah, let's go. So I entered the car. He just started driving. He was driving almost 120. He said, This is how they drive. I said, I'm not learning anything. He said, ah, Can't you see the way I'm driving? Just be driving like that. So I learned driving very from a very annoying person. And I remember. Then, when I drive, I, most of my pastors know, some people in church even know, I must get a text message from member, two, three, four, that it is well low, can you calm down? I remember one time I was going to Benin from here, road safety chased me. When they got to Benin, they just saw it was me, because our ministry was just starting then, they saw it was me. And they told me, you are an example of how a good Nigerian should not drive. Not, not an example of how they should drive. How they should not drive. I did yet to Benin 55 minutes. You know what that means? I was running 160. It was my wife who, who, taught, who changed me. One day we were driving. I was driving. She was in the car. She just said, oh, I forgot something. And I just pulled over. She opened the door, came down. He said, be going. I follow public transport. <laughs> Say, be going. Since you won't hear, calm down, calm down, calm down. Where we are going is not running. So, be going. I'll come with public. So, that was the day. You know, so what you don't know how to do is considered very hard. That's why some people say, how, how possible is it that a man can be with his wife and there are no problem? It's possible, just that you don't know how. He said, the labor of the foolish, where yet every one of them. 
because he doesn't know how to go into the city so the marriages of christ i'm telling you what i've seen pastors bishops people captains of industry a lot of people are dying because they are married there's a vacuum in their marriage there's a vacuum in their marriage but they don't want to talk about it because at a level uh, uh, is it is it dickens marriage they'll be settling especially imagine a dickens that is the head of marriage committee in his church and his marriage is dying he can't tell anybody and he's the head of marriage committee so there's so much pretense so he's dying in silence he's bearing it and you see people who just who are young 30 something early 40s who just got married young people they are doing well in their marriage and you're asking yourself a question what is lacking over this man who has been married he's running to 60 he's been married for a while and his marriage is not doing well it is the how that's a problem amen why, why, why do we say adam failed why do we call adam a man who failed adam succeeded in everything except marriage adam succeeded in everything except marriage so despite the fact he had the garden he had everything it was the failure of marriage that encapsulated the total failure of adam when god came what was the crisis the wife you gave me the wife you gave me the wife you gave me the woman you gave me the woman you gave me so failure of marriage it's very important that you must understand that's the plan of god for us amen to do well and you will do well Amen. I say you will do well Amen. I say you will do well Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. so we are going to consider that making marriage work you see the temptation of morality we started yesterday is the highest. just imagine um, Joseph Joseph's Joseph wife Joseph escaped Potiphar's wife and you know Potiphar was a wealthy man Bible says he had servants in his house, so he was a man. And you know, wealthy, wealthy man must have a very pretty wife. So Potiphar's wife must be very attractive. But the problem is, if Joseph has gone into sin, he would have the highest level of lifting Joseph would have gotten his executive servant. Executive servant, and they buy him shirt and buy him shoe. And he now, do you know he may have thought that was the fulfillment of the vision as an executive servant in the house of Potiphar? Well, let it go. He let it go. He let it go. There will be opportunity for several temptations. Opportunity. I know I, 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 I'm going to say some things and I just pray God helps us. Because as I counsel people, there are people that can't communicate. They can't tell you because of the way they place them. The pains they are going through. And most of those pains are actually unnecessary. Somebody say Unnecessary say unnecessary what does marriage work I run through them number one if your marriage must work it must be built on a good foundation foundation is everything foundation is everything if the foundation is wrong then there is nothing that will be right if the foundation is wrong there is nothing that will be right Everything that happens in life is on the platform of a good foundation. How far you go is determined by the foundation that you lay. How many of you know that if you are going to build a 10 story building, the foundation is different from a two story building? How many of you know if you are building a three story building, the foundation is different? It's different. I remember when we were building the tents, we, 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 we spent so much money on the foundation because I had the mentality that we are going to build a very huge church with a lot of galleries. I had that mentality when they were doing the tent. So we spent money on the foundation. They will drop 20 million. They will not see where it entered. They will drop this. And one day the Lord told me, say, why are you doing this? I said, because Lord, we are thinking of at least four galleries, different galleries. And I had it clearly. I didn't call you to build that place as a gallery. I say, yeah. When God was talking this to me, what I was calculating is how much we have wasted. I say, oh Jesus, He said, build a tent-like church, and I will develop it. I say, tent-like church, you will develop it. That's what I heard from the Lord. When we build that place, it was just iron bars and everything, very raw. When I see the finished product now, and I now remember, I will develop it. I heard from God.
There are people that have the liberty to do, build what they like. But what has helped us here is that we wait for instructions. If he's not talking, no matter how nice it appears, no matter how popular it is, we don't do it. Because at the end of the day, you will end up doing your own thing, not his own thing. And when the destinies of men are committed to you, you have to be very careful because you will give account. So you can't afford to be careless. So you have to be careful and wait for instructions. The foundation matters a lot. And I'm going to say this, please. And I need you to listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> when you marry a wrong person, there is nothing you can do. No marriage lecture, no marriage principle, no fasting, no prayer. Once the foundation, I'm, I'm talking of the foundation. The first foundation is that the person has to be right. The person has to be right. There is nothing. Do you know that marriage is already too heavy? Marriage in itself is too heavy to carry a wrong person to join you. No matter how solid you are, you alone cannot marry yourself. You need the right marriage in itself to be married, to stay married. It's enough load that you now add the wrong person on top. So who you add matters a lot. There are many people, at the, uh, they, they, they've been to all kinds of marriage counseling, they know everything, nothing is working because the person is wrong. When you miss it in partnership, you miss it for life. You marry a wrong woman, there is no fasting on the mountain that will help you. You have made a mistake, you have made a mistake. So every other thing I'm going to say now is a waste because you have married a bad... There are wrong people that cannot change. They know they are wrong. Not Talk from now to tomorrow, they won't change. It's a bad foundation. There's nothing you can do about it. So we keep advising people, hey, okay, pray, okay, try this method, okay, try that method, okay, try... It's already a wrong foundation. The worst thing that can happen to a man is to marry a woman meant for another man. That's why you must know. That's why you must know. It's very important. That's why you must know. I was in Lagos. Um, I went to pray in the, in, in the Redeem camp. So I met a pastor and the, at the camp. So he now told me, ah, he said, I like the way you are praying. No? I like the way you are praying. Can you come to our church and do a program? I did a program. And he said, can you just be around our church for a while? I was around the church. I was praying. And that was how I started supporting him in the work. In the crowd, there was a young lady who was very wealthy, a young girl, she had two cars, and she would buy me gifts. I collect gifts, buy suits, I collect suits. And she started talking about marriage to me, she, not me to her, she to me. That, ah, if I just get married now to her, there's so much. I said, ah, it was wonderful because I was seeing free suits, free shoe, free everything. But there was a problem. Um, can we go out? Ah, uh -uh. go out. Because the only place we met is the church hall. That's where we discuss and everything. Go out. And I said, okay. He said we should go to Badagri Beach. Now if you are in Lagos, you know Badagri Beach. It's the end of the world. We went, no, you know me, I, mean, I, mean, I will tell you everything. We went to the beach. We, if you see, we left Lagos. We are going, 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 going. I said, we have not said, no, it's going to be nice. Carried cooler, carried plates, carry everything. I didn't know because I have not been to a picnic. I don't know what picnic is in my life. I don't know what picnic. I only know pick pin. I don't know picnic. <laughs> so we went out there. So we got to the place. I was now watching, okay, we are here. What are we doing? Then he sat down. All this while I came down. I was, all I was that was what was in my head. And I said, came down. He said, I'll be running, you'll be pursuing me. I said, Why are you running? <laughs> Why will you be running? He said, ah, Don't you know how they do it? When I run now, you not pursue me. I said, ah, ah. Why will I pursue you? And why are you running? He said, Ah, you don't even know how they do this thing. When you are come now, for example, now, I will say, Come and catch me, you will come and take it. I said, Give it to me here now. Why will I come outside and take it? So I just said, No, no I'm not doing this. That was the problem. That was the problem there. I said, I'm not pursuing you. Why are we here? He said, ah. See, look at those people. They are pursuing. I said, because they want to pursue themselves. That's why they are pursuing them. I don't want to pursue anybody. And I said, ah, you don't know how they do this thing. I said, can we go back? What about the food? I said, let's go back. The driver was reversed. I said, so I entered the car. I was waiting. As we got back, that was the end of it. I said, no, this one. Mm -mm -mm. This one. There's nothing that... 
we, we are just less than a month. We are already pursuing each other. The next thing is to enter the room now. There's nothing else. Am I correct? The next will be to enter room. I said, no, I'm, I'm running from this one. So I left. And when I got home, I was talking to the Lord. God never told me, oh, you get married. When I was passing, I saw the person I've got married to. I looked at her. She was washing clothes. I left. I came back. My spirit just went for her. And I came back. When I asked her, what's your name? She told me. Mm. Because my idea of a wife was somebody who... Hey. In fact, I used to feel that the wife I want to marry has not been created. I wanted everything correct. Everything correct. But can I surprise you? The wife I have now has more than I'm looking for. But I didn't see that. There's nothing you can do when you marry a wrong woman. There's nothing you can do when you marry a wrong man. There's no prayer. And that's why I tell those single people before they marry, I say, you still have a choice. When it's a bad, even if you are good, you, you, you are good. By the time you bring a bad person. Okay. How many of you know if you are servicing your car, you get new oil? Eh? You get something, one and a half gall gallons, right? Some vehicle, two gallons. How many of you know that if you carry one, a car than this one and a half gallon, you carry one gallon and you now add half gallon condemned oil? What, what happens? Everything is gone. Everything is gone. Everything is bad. So even if you are good, if you are getting around, and that is why it now appears to be as if some men are bad. They are not bad. They only brought a bad person. That person mixed up with their being good. So now they appear bad. They are not bad. A man that never felt he would raise his hand on the woman. Today has become a woman bitter. Because until you slap her, she won't keep quiet. There are some women that can't keep quiet until they slap them. No, they won't keep quiet. Ooh, dicky, dicky, we stupid dicky. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You call yourself dicky, dicky, dicky. Ooh, oh, who made you dicky? If you are a dicky, me, I'm a reverend, I'm a reverend. Ooh, ooh. And guess what? By the time the man gets angry, power on the face. Throughout that week, you will see how holy she will be. As she's sweeping, she's singing, soon and very soon. All the righteousness that she has not. No, it's, it's the truth. All the righteousness she has not exhibited before, you see it comes out. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You see, you are very free not to agree with me. Any woman that they beat, I don't show sympathy for. Listen, listen. Violence, domestic violence is not just a crime against the government. It's a sin against God. Now you lift up your hand on your wife. But any woman they beat, I ask myself a question. Where were you till they beat you? You saw slap coming and you stand to collect slap. Except the man locks the door, keeps the key. You have no way to escape. Then I understand. But you see slap, he says, I will slap you. And he's coming close. You stand. You can't slap me. You saw his hand. You can't slap me. He set the hand. You can't slap me. He opened it. You can't slap me. I'm not in support of that, but when I, I tell them in church, uh, Daddy, my, uh, uh, so Daddy, uh, your son just came back from work and he slapped me. What? Call him. I said, Why did you slap your wife? And I asked the woman, I said, What? 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 He said, She abused me from morning to night. As when he was coming to you, why did you run? Mm, why will I run? Okay. So the person, before we start going to spirituality, we must first check the person. Who are you married to? The foundation. The second thing we must check about the foundation, the foundation has to be on Christ. It has to be on Jesus. All of those marriages where the woman get pregnant, you now go and pay her daddy, that's a wrong foundation. I'm sorry. If that's how you married your wife, she got pregnant for you, then you now have to, you had no choice, you had to rush and go and pay. That's not love. That's not a foundation that can last. It has to be built on Jesus. 
And that's why I tell people in our church, don't marry a non-believer. When we tell them, they think, oh, they are trying to control them. Don't marry a non-believer. If you marry a non-believer, the devil will be your father-in-law. Because a non-believer is a child of the devil. How can a man marry a lady who still visits her bodies? She still patronizes prayers, most, 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 more prayer houses. She still going, you are going to be in trouble. She has to build her life on Jesus. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. She has to build her life on what? On Jesus. It has to be on Jesus. It has to be on Jesus. And when a life is built on Jesus, then you have a future. Can I hear loud amen? amen. Can I hear louder amen? amen? Can I hear the loudest amen? amen? Christ is the first basic, basic foundation. It has to be built on Christ. It has to be... <laughs> the one that your father gave you, say, oh, it's time you are old, come and marry. We brought wife from village. And you have not investigated to know if this person is actually born again that you are going to have problems it has to be built on christ it has to be built on christ when the man is not totally saved or the woman is not totally saved and they get married it's going to be a problem when a man has a wife or a woman who before she got married she was there was already trust issues she was already double dating and now she got married you think now that she's married she'll stop double dating no the bible says stolen waters are sweet yes, sir. stolen waters stolen waters yes. Bread eating the secret is sweet. Proverbs 9:17. Stolu waters. That thing is still to eat. It's already in a system. Proverbs 9, Proverbs 9:17. It's already in a system. So it has to be somebody who knows God. It has to be somebody who is born again. It has to be somebody who takes orders from God. It has to be somebody, a woman who there are people today that you can never talk to. No, a woman you cannot advise. She's not broken, she's not saved. So the foundation is already wrong. Christ has to be the foundation. Marriage, the foundation, you have to understand the concept of marriage. That's part of the foundation too. You, have, you can't go into marriage without having the concept what is marriage about. What is marriage about? There are some men that have been married for 35 years and they don't know marriage. They only know that they have a, a woman at home and they have children. They don't know marriage. I'm sorry. They even have children that are grown enough to get married. Yet they don't know marriage. They don't know the concept of marriage. And they've been married. They have children. They have even having grandchildren. But they don't understand the concept. Marriage is spiritual. Look at me. Let me talk to you. Marriage is spiritual. Sometimes... Sometimes when my wife looks at me, she kneels down and she's thanking me for the way I treat her. I look at her, I say, if this woman knows that, it's not how I'm doing this myself. It's not marriage is spiritual. There are people, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, verse 7, he said, deal with them according to knowledge, so that your prayers be not in that. So marriage is spiritual. There is a way you treat your wife if you like. Listen to me. Marriage may not affect your marriage may not affect your prayer life, but it can affect your prayer. What I mean is that you can still be praying and fasting. That's prayer life. But the prayer, the answer to the prayer. One time in Malachi chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, he said, You weep on the altar, you cry on the altar, you give offering. God said, There's a way you will treat your wife. I will not even collect your offering. Verse 13, Malachi chapter 2. Go back to verse 13. This have you done again? Covering the altar with tears, with weeping, with crying out, in so much that he regarded not your offering anymore. The, the, the Bible did say, Don't drop it all. Before you say, I won't give offering, Papa. Say, Once you are calling to your wife, drop the offering. <laughs> drop the offering. But God say, I won't regard it. But the church will collect it. <laughs> don't worry drop it we will collect it but God says I will regard it anymore or receive it with good will at your hand see what God is saying look at what he says in verse 14 yet he say wherefore because the Lord has been witness between thee God has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against whom thou was dead treacherously yet she is thy companion and she is the wife of that covenant so anytime you make your wife cry God say your prayer is an insult to me 
when you even your offering god says it's an insult so once you have the mentality of god, when you have this spirituality at the back of your mind you will do everything to make her happy you do everything within your power by the help of god to make sure that she is constantly so when my wife tells me ah thank you very much thank you for giving me peace in my heart i say this woman is thanking me not knowing i'm happy my life happy my life so you must go back with that informed knowledge that your spiritual that's why some men will pray and 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 nothing is happening because at home is war the treatment is terrible the treatment is terrible they don't know the concepts so everybody you said you think marriage ladies marriage the strength of marriage is the quality of the people involved the strength of any marriage is the quality of the people involved is the people involved in a marriage that makes a marriage mm. is the people involved is the people involved foundation is important number two to make your marriage work understand your role don't switch roles you are a husband you are not a wife the bible never said your wife should love you i'm sorry the bible said your wife should submit to you the bible said you should love your wife stop asking your wife do you love me stop asking her god never told her to love you it sounds funny god told her to submit to you i will explain that to you god tell the man love your wife even as christ loved the church and gave when you give to a woman that's when she believes you love her yes, women see giving as love how can you be a man you don't give your wife money give your wife money this feeding money mentality that you carry this feeding money mentality have i ever given feeding money the woman said there's no money have i ever given feeding money this feeding money mentality will she take off herself give your wife money give give women like to collect women like to collect women are created to collect it is their destiny to collect a woman like to collect there's no woman you give money she says enough give her money tomorrow ask her do you need more a day you give her again do you need more a day they are created to collect that is why they collect your seed they collect the sperm they collect everything and they and the truth is this that woman you are not giving money you are doing yourself because anything you give to a woman she gives back to you a day is coming you will need it you give the woman your sperm she process it and give you back a child you give the woman love she process it and give you con give you compassion you give the woman problem she process it and give you wahala that is how they are wired their gift women like to they are wired to collect now not just money the right words women word the right word if you like give a woman a car if you insult her that gift is dead she has lost value for that thing women are created to hear the right thing hear this dr k adam when god created adam as soon as adam god took eve out of adam when adam opened his eye the first thing he saw was a naked woman that is from why men are moved by what they see. Because the first thing Adam saw was a naked woman. That's why men are moved by sight. The first thing that happened to Eve was she heard, this is the bone of my bone. That's why women are moved by what they hear. That's why women are moved by what they hear. You'll be surprised a man is wealthy and he has a security man that is making advances on his wife. You see a woman educated, what is she doing? There's something that you know. When I see some men, and I see the kind of women they marry, I see the man is not good looking. 
He doesn't have money. I see the lady educated and everything. I shake the man's hand. I say, you, I say, you came out. You came out. I said, because that's the only thing that you used to hold this person. So men's mouth is like knife. Your wife says you are stupid. You tell her you are stupid. No. Women talk before they think. If your wife is angry, leave me. Leave me. If, you have, if your wife tells you leave me, she's actually saying hold me. When your wife said, when your wife said, I want to be alone, she's actually saying, I'm tired of being alone. So if you are not careful, you take all those statements, you are going to have a problem. Your wife said, no problem. Go back to where you are coming. Go back. You came late. Go back. You two say, hey, you got a key. You are going. No. That's not what she means. Most times, what they say is opposite of what they mean. So if you are not careful, you react to every statement. Are you not the one that said, are you not the one? No. Don't mean it. No, she doesn't. So when you don't understand that, you're going to have a problem. The next you now insult her too. You see some men, some things they say to their wife, you'll be wondering if that is the mother of their children. They will use some very dead, heavy statement. Every sort. Insult the woman, insult her family. Nothing breaks a woman down like when you insult her family. Insult her family. Insult this. Insult that. Ah, no. The right words. What comes out of your mouth? It's only man. It's only a man. When a woman tells you, I want to be alone. No. It's only a man that needs to be alone to organize himself. Okay. You know, a, a woman was telling me, said, Daddy, I don't know my husband. My husband. Walk, 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 walk. I said, that is how a man is wired. If a man's business is not doing well, there's nothing you tell him. He's not hearing you. There's nothing you will tell him. He's not hearing you. As that's how they are wired. But women, are, all they want is just that love. You are in this conference. You are in this conference. It's a different town. Biscuit is biscuit. Cake is cake. But the cake you bought in Aochi is not the cake you bought in Lagos. The fact that there is Lagos Aochi label on that cake, you carry that sacrifice to buy that thing. It means a lot to your wife. It might be small. Some of you have never got your wife a gift. It's true. Maybe that's not your wired. You must know what she likes. Look for what she likes and give her. You can't just be giving your wife pocket money, pocket them, feeding money. No. How much is feeding money? She tells you the amount. Add something on top. Because when the woman tells you feeding money is 100,000, it's not 100,000, it's 75. She put her own on top. No, that's how they are wired. Woman will not tell you. That balance is her own. You know. Act like you don't know. A woman does not like a husband that knows everything. You know that this amount you gave her now is the exact. You know that the money is too much. Act like you don't know. Act like you don't know. She tells you that she wants to buy this thing. My husband, give me this money now for that cloth. Don't ask her. Don't ask her tomorrow. Hey, hey, come. Where is that cloth? Don't ask her. Let her on her own come to you with it. Because there are sometimes she may not buy that one, she may buy another one. You know, let me tell you something. We are men. When you go to the shop, for example, you want to buy a trouser. You go to the shop, you want to buy a black trouser. How I many of you know when you just go straight, you see black trouser, you buy, you pay. Am I correct? You pay, you go. When the woman goes and she sees black trouser, she wants to look for another black that is more blacker than that black. <laughs> she wants to. <laughs> She wants to go around. That is why women do more of window shopping. Men just go somewhere and they buy. One of the things, thank God now, you know, when I just got married to my wife, one of the things I didn't like was traveling with her. Hey! You stop four times. She will say this one. Ah, we need this at home. Stop, stop. We need this at home. Stop, stop, stop. I said, Jesus, what kind of trouble is this? She will go back. Guess what? After 10 minutes, she will enter. I know, but it's not good. Let's go. Ah! know what they like and give it to them for example one of my biggest weakness i when i get to the house my pastors are here i don't come out of the room it's in nature if you invite me anywhere to minister the people in the hotel will tell you program when you came to carry him is when he came out i don't go out it's a, it's a nature in me i can be indoors for 
two, three days a week, I won't come downstairs. My own sitting room, I can't count how many times I've gone downstairs this year to my sitting room. So, I have a problem. I said to God, you are going to help me because I don't know how to buy gifts. Because when you travel, you will now go out, you will now be going to shop, you will now be doing stuff. I don't know how to buy gifts. I don't know how to even buy for myself. If not camera and preaching around the world, I can wear this shoe for 10 years. And you know there is grace. There is grace. <laughs> and in the children of Israel, they wore one shoe for 40 years as they were growing this shoe. As they were growing, the shoe was growing. No, I don't have problem. I don't have any. I don't have issues. I can just wear that thing and um, and be going. So I don't. So now I, I said, God help me. Now I now got favored by God that I have a wife that does not like gifts. No. If you buy my wife a, anything, a perfume, buy like five, she will look at you. Five. Am I smelling? Why do you buy me five perfume? Why? She doesn't understand. If you buy a wristwatch now, you tell her the amount, she will give you, say, give me the money. Take it. Don't just talk. So I discovered that she prefers cash. And not cash for herself. If you are giving her money now, bam, it's only God will bless you. Do you know just two days ago, God put in my heart that I should give money to all the widows. Only God will bless you. Do you know there are some women in our church, I don't like the way they dress. I want to buy suit for all of them. So I know it's okay, she loves charity. Okay, so this one is cash. No problem. It's easier for me. I just carry as I take. Know what they like. And there are some women, as old as they are, you are married now, your wife is almost 65, she's still like ice cream. And you are confused. She just like that thing. Give them. That to them, that is love. Oh. That is what they call love. It is what you give to a woman that she communicates to be love. No matter what you say. No matter what you do. Oh, your wife still like ice cream. How old is she? In her 50s. She's, it's like that. There are some people, they just like that. One time I came downstairs, I was walking a man of God to um, his car and I saw a couple. I had to give them a seat to pray for me. The man said he's 96. And the wife came and I said, come on baby, come on baby. The wife was walking. Oh, don't rush me. I stopped. How old? Say she's in her mid-80s. Baby. So I need to know something. What I saw in them was that proximity. Wow. The man said, I said, How old are you, sir? He mentioned. He said, I'm not 100 yet. I'm not 100 yet. Ah, you're not 100 yet. And I was talking to them. Their first son is in his 60s. So I followed them. I sat down. I needed to learn. I want to learn. And they opened their mind. They began to tell me things. I said, how do you stay this long? He said, I know what she likes. I do it. She knows what I like. She does it. Everybody's happy. He said, that's what has kept us. I keep doing what she likes. She keep doing what I like. And we are happy. There are some women that know what their husband like. It's always opposite. Opposite. And there are men that know what their wives like. They do opposite. Stay on your, stay your role. Give her money, give her the right words, give her counsel. Say to her, love your wife. Words, right words. Tell her, show her, sustain it, stay in love. Stay in love. Stay in love. There are some men say, yeah, Papa, Papa, I'm not wired. I know, the, I know the, what is that? I'm not talking all the time. You're going to have problems. Once in a while, say the right words. Because God wants us to have a healthy home. He wants all to have a healthy home. Life is not just about yourself. There are so many people, their whole life is about themselves. It's about themselves. It's about themselves. When anything is not working, they look for who to blame. They blame everybody except themselves. They are the God in their own eyes. 
You have a friend, after three, four, five years, your friend is doing well, you say he's using your star. Do you have star? No, if somebody, you are 52, 53, somebody enter your life, another three years is using your star, that person, congratulate him, thank him for proving to you that you're, when Nigeria is praying and we are still poor, does China pray like this? China does not pray like that. That's why they gave us COVID-19. If they were prayerful, they won't give us coronavirus. Does America, does Europe pray like that? Do you want to know the tsunami that happens there every month? Every year, rather? You want to know the, the, the disaster that we don't see in Nigeria? Don't try to talk down prayer and bring a point that is very, very, very irritating. That does not even tally. Oh, look at Elon Musk. He's rich. Does he pay tight? Do you know the charity those men give? Bill Gates, the other time, came to Kano and gave billions of dollars for polio. Billionaires around the world, what they do? The investment, the giving that comes out of them. How they support institutions. Jeff Bezos came back from, the, from this place the other day and gave a CNN reporter a hundred million dollars. Is that not a tight? Gave two of them, one black, one white. Hundred million, hundred million dollars. You are, why are you not talking about that? Any form of charity. So don't talk down on Christians all because you are angry at a certain group of people. You now blanket everybody and give them a name. Say, that's why me, I don't go to church anymore. I stay in my house. That's why church does not miss you. Do we miss you? You say you don't go to church. Are we missing you? We are not missing you. Since you stopped coming to church, there is peace. When you were coming to church, there was no peace. Even the Prince of Peace was looking for peace. When you, but, but now, you stop coming to church, there is peace. So stay in your house. Stay in your house. That's why I say I will not give my money to church again. The money you had that could not change your life. What does the church need it for? Money you had that could not change your own life. What do we need your money for? Keep it. Keep it. Keep the money. God is raising up people in the church that will give without looking back. God is going to bless them. God is going to empower them. That when they give to God, they give and they're excited to give. I told God, I said, Father, bless me. Let my life be an example to my members. When I'm calling people to give 10,000 naira, let me give way more than that. When we are building that church, there are members of the church who are here. We didn't take an offering. We're building that church. We didn't take an offering. Never took an offering. We're just being come. They saw building going up. Building going up. Only few were wise to say, ah, ah, Papa, what sin did we commit? What sin is not possible? Some of the senior pastors say, no, now, this man will just be doing everything by himself. That's the kind of mentality I have. I don't believe in waiting for people. I don't believe in, we don't have this church, no beauty committee. Oh. There's no beauty committee. Committee can make you commit crime. There's, there's no beauty committee. I don't have energy for people that will be slowing me down. The one we did here, I regretted it. We are building this church, they came to me. Hey, it's too big, oh. let's cover foundation, let's cover. This building that we now use as children church, they say it's too big, oh Papa. If you gather the Oahuachi, they will only be under the gallery. There, the Oahuachi. See such myopic. So from that day, I said, beauty committee dissolve. When God call me, call me alone. <laughs> Nobody will slow me down. But God Almighty has been faithful. He has been faithful. Am I communicating? Understand your role as a man. You know, I get uncomfortable. Listen to this. Hear this, man. One of the things I get uncomfortable, you may have noticed that, that there are some men that are so angry with their wife, they extend it to the children. I don't want to have anything to do with her. I don't want to have anything to do with the kids. What has the children done to you? Say, so, no. They say in our place, in our place, in our place, that uh, when serpents give birth to serpents, there are some parables you hear from people, you just get angry. You just get angry. A man was giving me a parable in my office and I stopped him. I said, the people that made that parable, they have been looking for how to change it. That parable you just gave now. They have been, all the elders that sat down, they are in their grave now, thinking of how to change that parable. This parable you said, how can you tell, tell somebody that the downfall of a man is not the end of his life? You, you use that to encourage failure. The downfall of a man is not the end of his life. It depends on where you are falling from. Don't fall at all. Refuse to fall. I mean, somebody was consoling someone. He said, I said, I was there. My wife was there. And the person said, ah, ah, sorry, yeah. He's dead, sorry. Such is life. I said, how can you be so wicked? Is dead life. He said, sorry. God is faithful. God is your strength. How can somebody die? You say, such is life. 
you are saying they should accept that I said no there are some things if you have nothing to say just keep quiet and that's why in this ministry we don't like to bury people we don't like to bury people no we don't bury. I tell God burying is not our portion everybody will live to full full age get old that when the man wants to die just gather his family gather everybody they jeez they laugh he's already old that was, you know how Jacob died Bible says he carried his two legs and put on the bed blessed everybody and he slept honorable way to go honorable not dying like a chicken there are some deaths you hear you just be angry you don't have to cry or to be angry it's what Kidama he fell from Okada he fell from bike he fell from bike he broke, <laughs> broke his waist as he was rushing to fix his bone he died so what kind of year year, year year dies this are you following what I'm saying number three godly counsel to make marriage work you need godly counsel please kill that mentality of you don't need third party in your home you need you need a healthy third party we have grown up with that mentality you don't need third party in your home eh? just you and your wife you don't need third party you need a healthy third party can you imagine a wedding that jesus attended in john chapter 2 from the day of the wedding they already had third party yes, sir. Yes, sir. and because you need third party because a time will come when there will be no wine. Yes, sir. And no matter your expertise, you cannot generate wine. Yes, sir. You need a third party who, can, who has a knowledge of how the wine can be brought. Yes, who is a third party? Somebody who has succeeded in the dimension where you are trying to achieve success. One of the reasons why Moses listened to Jethro was not just because Jethro was his father-in-law. Jethro was a good man who understood marriage. Guess what? He was a pagan priest. If you read Genesis chapter 18 from verse 2, the Bible says, and Jethro brought back Moses' wife that he sent back. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. Go to verse 5. Verse 5. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons, his wife, unto Moses in the wilderness. And then come to the mount of God. Verse 6. Verse 6. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father in law Jethro, am come with thee and thy wife and thy two sons with her. Geshem and Eleazar, we have Moses' two sons. Verse 7. And Moses went out to meet with his father in law and did obeisance and kissed him. And they asked, they asked each other of their welfare and came into the tent. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. You see that? They ask each other. There are some father-in-laws. Husband send away. They will keep the girl. Some of you fathers are like that. And I've discovered that people who, has, who, are, who hold marital positions in church always, always have daughters who they have spoiled. The, the father sent her back. But today, the generation we have, the husband sends a wife out of anger, which is wrong. The father keeps the girl. That the man must come and do some things. You are making easy matters prolong. We must gather family. You don't need all that drama. You don't need all that drama. You must gather family. You must, there are so many drama that we don't need. If I'm permitted to rewrite wedding, a wedding ceremony, there are many things that they will not do in that wedding. What do you need a best man for? Can't you clean your sweat? Can't you carry and catch if I'm cleaning your sweat? But best man will now wear suit, wear shoe at your expense. All those plenty of girls they call bridal train. What do you need them for? All of them are coming to the church, following you like willy willy. They're just coming like that. <laughs> they're following you, then <laughs> you'll not be throwing what Sp th that thing you spend money on. Why do you have to feed everybody? Didn't they eat at home? There are many things that just wear us. Let's go home. Why do you have to kill cow? Kill this one. Dude, if you allow me, I will rewrite it. <laughs> you have to kill cow. You have to do this one. They will now wear suit. And now this day is not so bad. They have the best man. They now have groomsmen. What are they doing? What are they doing? They will not give them chair in front for doing nothing. So if I'm permitted to do wedding, just come on the Sunday, carry your wife. Both of you kneel down. They bless you. Everybody go home. Go home. Save yourself the stress. They now have a little child. 
innocent child though, that does not like suit. That child doesn't. He, doesn't, he doesn't like suit. He likes canvas. They now give a shoe. The child come there. Guess what? He starts sleeping. They, they wake him. Say, bring ring. All those are not necessary. Praise the Lord. Counsel. Proverbs 15, 22, Bible says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. Proverbs 24, verse 6 says, in much of counsel, there is safety. You need counsel. A time comes that you need to get to a point. Proverbs 11, 14, without counsel, say, men shall fall. You need to get to a point where somebody needs to be able to counsel you. And as a man of God, or as a child of God, rather, as a child of God, as a believer, you must not be angry with your wife for reporting you to pastor. You have carried me to the church. How will pastor look at me? Do you prefer she report you to a herbalist? A herbalist will not solve your problem. It will complicate it. This woman has reported to an authority she feels with respect. And there are some people who say, no, I'm not coming to church. About people, when they have issues, I say, call your husband. I'm not coming. I say, sir, I have nothing to lose, though. If you don't come, it even make my going home faster. A man said, I'm not coming. About two years later, they brought him with stroke. And I looked at him. I said, it's not the man two years ago. I, I'm sorry, sir. I said, this thing could have been avoided. Because he went to the world. He said, I'm not, I'm not going to church again. Went back to the world, to the other religion. Went back there. It is old-fashioned to backslide. It's old-fashioned. It is primitive to go back to the world. There is nothing out there in the world. It's not you lost nothing. You miss nothing being in Christ. You miss, in fact, you gain your sanity. Do you know yourself? Now you can come home 8 p.m., 7 p.m. before you come home 2 a.m. You can't have rest, you can't sleep. Taking all kinds of alcohol, liver cancer, smoke all kinds of things, bronchitis. But now God has brought sanity to you. There's nothing you lose. Godly counsel. Stop this arrogance as a man. If you can't hear men, you can't hear God. No matter what you want to do, there must be somebody in your life that can tell you, stop. And you stop. One day I was traveling, I preached and I was tired. I was tired and I was the one to drive. Sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I want to drive. I was the one to drive. Before I even left home, my wife was talking to me. I was already almost dozing. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm traveling. I have to, I have to fly out for this program. Like this? And you want to drive? I said, no, no, I'm not. I'm doing I jumped to the car. Bam! While I was going, a car was coming. My wife has reported me to my father and the Lord. Talk to your son, no? the way it's going. As soon as I saw, I didn't even I said, I know why you call her. I'm reversing. I'm reversing. <laughs> There's no need to. I'm, I'm turning. That program canceled. There was another one. I got to the airport. I saw the plane. I was told, don't move. I turned back. Straight back to Auchi. No question. How can a father in the law spend three hours? If you are a submissive man, he's counseling you for three hours. That's a proof of your arrogance. Three hours. Make peace. No, 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 no. This matter. No, 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 sir. Please, sir. Without due respect. Without you. Three hours. They sit down there, you drag issues that are very consequential. When, when, when you have godly counsel, the counselor must be somebody who has succeeded where you are trying. Don't meet a counselor who has a shaky home. A shaky home? A man gave me a book. While I was trying to look at the preface, you know the preface of a book, I was trying to look at the preface. Next day, I said, tell, telling the wife, Are you mad? Come on, move fast. What was the key of the book? Having a happy home. Having a happy home. And I was telling her, Are you mad? Move fast. I just gave him back the book. He said, What? I said, Sir, read your book. Read your book. You need the book more than me. Happy home, and you are insulting her in front of me. So you are re read your book. You need the book. Am I communicating here? You cannot be failing in that area, and you are trying to mentor. You know, 
for many years, <laughs> somebody met me one day. And that was 2016. He says, I've heard your message. I've heard, I've heard different titles of your message. But I'm looking for a title on patience. I started laughing. He says, sir, you don't have any message on patience. I started laughing. He said, why? I said, am I patient? <laughs> I said, am I patient? I want to do everything now, now, now. So why will I preach what I'm not doing? I'm not patient. I know patience as a revelation, but I cannot stand on the altar to say it until it has first of all manifested in my life. I said, no, don't worry. That, that message will come. I said, eh. Somebody met the later bishop and said to our bishop, pray for me. Say what? I need the gift of patience. He said, when do you need it? No, 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 no. You want patience and you want it? No, 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 no. He said, you have already failed. You want patience, be patient. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not patient to have, to have patience. I'm, I'm not patient to have patience. I want patience. No, 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 no. So it was some years ago, two, three years ago, I started putting patience in my messages when I know that now I can watch some things. Some things will happen <laughs> then. I will react. Now if it happens, Reverend Kingsley or will ask the Fidelis, was Papa there when that happened? Say yes. What did he do? He kept quiet. Say, hey! We were, we were the ones that suffered. He kept quiet. Say yes. He didn't do anything. He said yes. Ah! See, we, this is cheating, oh. When we started, we know the suffer we suffered. I remember a senior pastor who was giving a handset and from a person who he was supposed to be following up, he collected the handset. We suspended him for two months. This is somebody you are supposed to be following up in Christ. You are collecting phone. We sent him to Igara for two months. While he was in Igara, somebody now gifted him a phone. We said, okay, we suspended you for collecting phone. You went to Igara. And collected a gift of a phone. He says, it's my birthday. We say, it doesn't matter. From a guy we sent him somewhere else for suspension. He told me, he said, throw that period of his phone like this. <laughs> but I can't. Because I'm not a general overseer. <laughs> Praise God. You need counsel. Somebody has got to talk to you. Praise God. Finally, I, 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 am I blessing somebody here? Yeah? Am I blessing somebody here? You know, you know Moses would have died. Moses, Moses at 120, the Bible says natural force was not abated. His eyes were not him. You know why? If you read verse 13 of Genesis, of Exodus, Genesis 18, rather. Exodus 18, sorry. Verse 13. The Bible says, when Jethro saw the way Moses was going about morning to night to sit on the spot doing counseling, that is with thee.